My fellow citizens, in a matter of weeks, we will face another general elections in St. Kitts and Nevis. This election will be transformative. However, it will also be an election that replaces a troubled and undemocratic leadership with a new and vibrant team of servant leaders whose only aim is to deliver the promises of greater prosperity and accountability to the people. As the political leader of PAM, I feel very confident about the future for our country and the brighter prospects that are ahead. This election will heavily focus on the rebuilding of trust and integrity and about the real development of our people. Trust is integral in any relationship and the majority of members who comprise the government unfortunately lost all trust in Dr. Timothy Harris. His propensity to look you in the eye and blatantly lie is unimaginable to those who do not know him. He sat next to colleagues in cabinet while waging a constant war of undermining their efforts and their ministries and departments. We try to have our concerns addressed and to have him change his ways, but still, he would look you in the eye and continue his program of undermining. It is and was a reality that is and was difficult to fathom. We tried two formal meetings to resolve our differences and he seriously refused to negotiate. We tried again with a formal letter with all grievances and to meet for a third time and he insulted us with an 18-page diatribe that again failed to seriously address the issues. What many do not know is that he agreed to meet just last weekend after the intervention of a citizen of goodwill and he refused to attend the meeting claiming that he was sick and under doctor orders to rest. However, that same day, he was seen out and about and very active in public, including attending a church service on the Sunday. It is very clear that Dr. Harris had no desire to meet and to resolve the issues. He preferred to pursue his narrow personal objectives that are designed to benefit him and his close family and associates. And this is what PAM and CCM intend to change. Our interest will not be about short-term handouts, nor would it be about deception. Others are already using government money and resources to give you a quick fix, which really is only a ploy to deceive you, and then after the election, they will forget you. They have no interest in your well-being. They will use you and then discard you. The People's Action Movement has been preparing for this election and is ready to offer itself in partnership with the Concerned Citizens Movement as a viable alternative to the destructive paths that have led us to the current political impasse. I have said before, and it is worth repeating here and in the future, PAM and CCM working together offer hope, stability, and continuity. In recent weeks, I outlined some of the programs, policies, and initiatives that we will pursue. Very shortly, we will unveil more chapters of the brighter future that we hope to offer our people. In addition, you will soon get the opportunity to meet our eight candidates for the People's Action Movement. Now, let me turn to current matters. On Tuesday, 10th May 2022, the outgoing Prime Minister announced that he had advised the Governor General to dissolve the National Assembly, effective that same day. This means that elections must be held within 90 days or no later than 7th August 2022. 
However, it will not take 90 days for the elections to be called. As we say in St. Kitts and Nevis, the bell will ring long before the 90-day period. Elections could be held as early as mid-June or within the first two weeks of July. I therefore encourage all PAM supporters and members of the party to check the voters list now to ensure that your names are accurately recorded in the polling divisions where they should. I also urge PAM members and supporters who are not yet registered to do so within the next 10 days. As I have said before, this election will present many uncertainties. But the only certainty we have is that the outgoing Prime Minister will not return as Prime Minister after the elections. Of course, in desperation, he will try all types of tricks, gimmicks, and perhaps many activities that could be challenged for their constitutionality and legality. When someone is desperate and has a lot to lose, not just politically, but personally, they would try anything and there would be no respect for laws, norms, and decency. Dr. Timothy Harris has no moral authority to govern. Our parliament is comprised of 11 elected representatives. Six of us are from PAM and CCM and do not support Harris. Two others are from the St. Kitts and Nevis Labour Party and they too do not support Harris. This leaves Harris and one other member of his party who support him. In addition, there is one additional MP who seems to have put his personal benefits ahead of his loyalty to country and his party. So, in a country that is supposed to be democratic, we have a situation where three elected MPs out of 11 are masquerading as a government, while eight duly elected ones clearly do not support this travesty that is being condoned by a few who benefit from the handouts of government resources. The outgoing Prime Minister is therefore selfishly insisting on clinging to power, regardless of the damage being done to St. Kitts and Nevis. He has put his personal loss for power before what is right, just, and good for our people. His political impotence was exposed for all to see when he tried to summon a cabinet meeting but could not do so. His legitimacy having long evaporated once the majority of Team Unity MPs had filed a vote of no confidence in his leadership. The artificial cabinet has no constitutional, moral, or political authority to govern. Having lost the confidence of the cabinet, the only option was for him to resign as prime minister. Some said that he wanted to resign, but was discouraged to do so by a small group who feel that their benefits would be evaporated. Instead, he precipitated an unprecedented constitutional crisis that has caused grave international embarrassment and shame. Today, it is hard to find a Caribbean leader who wishes to associate with Dr. Harris. His actions have created political instability and have driven a dagger into the heart of our cherished democracy. For this, he will never be forgiven by the people of St. Kitts and Nevis. Dr. Harris undermined the greatest concept in the modern politics of St. Kitts and Nevis, that of a united government working in the interest of all. He has betrayed the people by ignoring the promise of accountability, transparency, and good governance in search of a better and brighter future. But the end is near. The voice of the people will be the final arbiter. The nation is waiting to exhale. I know your patience is wearing thin. I am advised that on Tuesday, 
the outgoing Prime Minister also announced that he had requested of His Excellency the Governor-General to have the ministerial appointments of six cabinet members revoked. If this were not a serious matter, it would tempt many to laugh. His purported firing of cabinet ministers is amusing given their principled stand of abstention from the cabinet as a mark of protest against his illegitimate hold on power. Bolting the stable door after the horses fled is an act of utter desperation that highlights his obsession with the office of Prime Minister. These six members made it clear to the Governor-General and the entire population of St. Kitts and Nevis since 20th April 2022 that they had no confidence in the leadership of the outgoing Prime Minister and that he no longer commands their support to continue serving in that capacity. Perhaps it was not obvious to the outgoing Prime Minister that the horses had long left the stable before the sound of his starter gun. You may also recall that I filed a motion of no confidence against the government due to the poor leadership of the Prime Minister. That motion was filed on Monday, 25th April, 2022, and by law had to be heard within 21 days. This means that the motion would have had to be debated in Parliament by 15 May, 2022. My fellow citizens, in other words, the outgoing Prime Minister had no alternative but to dissolve the National Assembly on Tuesday. It was not an option that he had. He was forced into a corner where the deadline was fast approaching. When the National Assembly is to be convened, all parliamentarians must be given notice five days in advance. Therefore, the Speaker would have summoned the meeting of the National Assembly by yesterday, Wednesday 11th May, for a meeting to take place by Sunday. The outgoing Prime Minister had no choice. Time ran out on him, and to avoid being fired by a successful motion of no confidence, he ran to our distinguished Governor-General to save face and dissolve the National Assembly. So, now, we must get ready to face the people and convince them that we are the best option for the future of St. Kitts and Nevis. I sense your frustration and pain. Rest assured that you will have your say. I call upon Dr. Harris to stop the dramatics and advise His Excellency to fix the election date. You can run, but you cannot hide from the people. We know he plans to use money from the government's treasury for political campaigning. I warn public officers to be true to their oath and protect the public purse from such illicit machinations. It would be an act of serious misconduct in public office for Dr. Harris to spend public funds for cleverly disguised political campaigning. Rest assured, we intend to closely monitor Dr. Harris to ensure that they do not spend your money in such a flippant manner. Having consistently failed to listen to reason, he must now listen to time and ultimately to the people. The dim light at the end of the tunnel will grow brighter once the date for the next general election is fixed. Be strong, have faith and trust in the good Lord. Soon enough, you will have the chance to let Harris know what you think and how you feel. Sooner rather than later, the people will have the opportunity to stand for real unity. The dream of real unity shall never die. It will live on in the united front between CCM and PEN. Thank you.